sheets, okay? Let me show you them. What's up guys, welcome back. So today is the first episode of my new series that I'm calling How Clean Is. And How Clean Is is basically my attempt at examining brands that don't necessarily self-identify as being clean, but I still think that some products in their line will meet our clean beauty standards on my channel. So if you are new here, you might not know, I have spent this entire year so far on a project that I'm calling Clean Routine 2019, and it was basically an attempt to see whether switching to all clean beauty would help my skin, if it made a difference at all, etc. I do share values with a lot of the, you know, ingredients conscious websites online and the stores and clean support and things like that. But what I found is that while ingredients matter, I don't necessarily align with every single thing because they definitely differ brand to brand and store to store and everything and the word clean gets thrown around a lot. So I think we can think for ourselves on my channel and I want to help you guys think for yourselves too. So we're going to be deep diving on ingredients for Hourglass today. And Hourglass is a brand that has a lot of products that have really, really great ingredients and some that I would definitely suggest passing on. So I tried some, we're going to talk about performance. I'm going to insert some clips of me kind of putting it on my face, give you guys a review on that. We're gonna talk about the ingredients. I made you guys an enormous exhaustive spreadsheet of all the ingredients in their entire line. I'll give you guys kind of a rundown on the brand's packaging, their sustainability, their ethics, their mission, etc. And then I will give you guys my final Thoughts. So first and foremost, I do want to say not every product from Hourglass listed their ingredients. I think there were like three that I missed. Also, if you are new to the idea of clean beauty and safe synthetics, I just want to clarify one thing. Long ingredient names are not necessarily bad. Doesn't mean that they're always good, but they're not necessarily bad. I think that Eating clean has taught a lot of us to really avoid long chemical names because we don't want to put these weird synthetic things in our bodies. But from a cosmetic standpoint, most of the time that means that it has been reworked and kind of reverse engineered in a lab to be safer for humans to use. And in comparison to something like a natural product or uh, an essential oil or something like that, those products with those really, really long names most of the time means that they have had more testing on human subjects than a lot of the kind of natural products. So I just want to level set with you guys on that because Hourglass does have some products with essential oils in them and a lot of products with really, really long chemical names. And I just want to make sure that no one is afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. We're in this together. So before we start, I just want to say, A, if you think that this is a really cool idea and this is something you want me to do more of, give this video a like. It will absolutely help me to know that you want more How Clean Is videos and for specific brands that you guys want me to deep dive on, make sure you leave those in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure that you subscribe while you're here so that you can see my face every time I upload. So guys, let's go ahead and jump in. So the three products that I chose from Hourglass are the, uh, the Vanish Seamless Foundation Stick in Blanc. I have the new Ambient Lighting Blush Quad in Ghost, and then I went for the Veil Translucent Setting Powder. Hourglass is a very luxury brand. These were not inexpensive products. I did get them during the Sephora VIB sale, and when I went into Sephora, I trust my brain enough that I just read the back of the packages and I thought I could probably navigate the ingredients well enough to decide what to bring home that I could safely use on my face and probably what to skip. But I will say, some things surprised me when I did do a little bit more research. So first things first, I started with the Vanish Foundation Stick. I got it in the shade Blanc. It is the lightest shade that they make. I did end up having to return the concealer that I bought online because they actually don't make a concealer shade light enough for me, not that I could find in Sephora at least. And the way that I applied it was to dab a little bit of the Drunk Elephant Deep Bronzy on my skin, kind of on my cheeks and on my forehead to bring a little bit more warmth to it because this is such a pale shade, but I wanted that paleness so that I could then, you know, have it match my neck and things like that. Then I went in with the powder on top of my concealer, and then I went in with the blush palette. I do want to talk about this blush palette because I have definitely seen mixed reviews on it. As you can tell, I am, 
I don't, I don't know, I, fair to porcelain. <laughs> Honestly, in terms of my skin tone, I have freckles, so I don't really feel comfortable calling myself porcelain. I think porcelain is more cool toned, but I am like very creamy pale. I'm about as pale as you can get and still be kind of like golden warm undertoned. That said, a lot of the reviews that I saw for all of the ghost release, hence the word ghost, was that this is really, really pale and chalky. And you can see that those are not necessarily, hmm, universal shades. They would definitely go ashy on some deeper skin tones, probably even medium skin tones. And I know that a lot of you guys have expressed the same frustration in my comments when I've mentioned this before. However, if you are like me and you are like the lightest shade that they make in most cosmetics, this will be beautiful on you. <laughs> it's really, really wonderful. Like I said, I don't have enough experience with the rest of their line to be able to recommend another set that they might've done that might've been better for deeper skin tones. I'm not totally sure, but I will say, yes, this is too light for some people, but it is perfect for me and I love it. And the veil powder, I kind of took a leap of faith and bought the gigantic one because I, I just assumed I would love it. And I really, really do. First of all, what I love about these two products together is just that they go on and they don't ever get cakey. I was able to use very little of this and blend it out with a beauty blender. You could put more on, get like a really, really like photo ready kind of like full coverage thing. You might not even have to use concealer with this. You know, you could put that much of it on. It builds really beautifully, but it stays slightly dewy. It never goes like full, full matte. They do have other foundations, but none of them came in like a light enough shade for me. And this powder, while beautifully setting, super, super beautiful, like silky kind of setting effect on your, on your makeup. It doesn't super mattify or cake up. So I love that I still have, mm, I guess you could say the light hits my face naturally. That's one of the biggest things I have an issue with when I use either super full coverage or matte or both really, is that sometimes, especially with powder, the light will hit your face differently. I'm under a lot of lights. It can really <laughs> be savage. It can really play me sometimes. And this isn't doing that. It's giving me a very true to skin, true to color. You know, it translates to the eye in a really, really natural way. And I think that that's actually harder to find than it should be when it comes to full coverage foundations. It doesn't oxidize. It doesn't do anything crazy. These are luxury products and you can definitely tell. So those are the three that I tried. I just kind of wanted to show you putting them on. I'm going to list everything else that I have on my face down below so that you guys can uh, check it out. Feel free to ask me any questions down below about that stuff. I have reviews on almost everything <laughs> in other videos. So definitely go like, you know, poke around the channel and see. But let's go ahead and jump in on ingredients because that's really why you came here, right? <laughs> yes, I have two computers here. <laughs> one that I'm filming with and one that I'm using for my, my spreadsheets, okay? <laughs> my Pokemans. Let me show you them. So what I do and what I will continue to do with this series is essentially pull every single product that they make that I can find the ingredients on. I will then matrix out all of the ingredients that are in that product, in, in all of the products, and then I will put a little X for every single product uh, that has that ingredient in it so that you guys can kind of see and filter and manipulate as you see fit. I have the EWG ratings, I have the cause DNA ratings, I have the purpose of the product, like what it's supposed to do, or the ingredient I mean, what it's supposed to do in the product, and also some notes of my own because there are some caveats about EWG and cause DNA specifically. They are going to, if you are kind of new to this world, they're going to differ a lot from someone who calls themselves a, an expert on ingredients, like for example, Paula from Paula's Choice, who is also the, you know, the founder of Beautypedia. Like that doesn't give necessarily a safety rating. These are more about safety and like public safety. But for example, EWG and Cosine are always gonna give really high ratings and high is bad um, to like retinol anything that's a retinoid. They always err on the side of safety, whereas someone like Paula's Choice is just going to grant the user a little bit more leeway to use a product responsibly. And they are far, far more interested in recommending a product based on the potency and the effectiveness of the ingredients than just 
safety. So that said, there are so many ways to slice and dice clean beauty. It's really, really hard to kind of please everyone, but I encourage you if some of these things don't necessarily add up for you to do some of your own research because this doesn't necessarily address like ethics issues and things like that. It is purely about safety. So one of the first ingredients that I kind of want to call out because I know that it concerns some of you guys. I don't necessarily find it to be any kind of problem, but it is a preservative called phenoxyethanol and it is used widely in hourglass products. It gets a four from EWG, which is not terrible, but it definitely has had I don't know, a questionable past. It's had some weird kind of like side studies and things like that that implied that like nursing mothers could like give their kids nausea and stuff like that. So if you're super concerned about it, don't use it while nursing, don't put it on your baby kind of thing, but it is in plenty of brands that claim to be clean. I know just off the top of my head that uh, Florence by Mills uses it as a preservative. Very, very low on the actual ingredients list in most cases. And there are also plenty of EWG certified products that they would definitely like suggest, they would recommend, uh, you know, tip top meets all their standards on their website that also contain phenoxyethanol. It is just a matter of whether or not it is important to you. And some people I know have actual skin sensitivities to it. So be aware of that. If parabens are a thing that bothers you, there are parabens in their eyebrow pencils. Not their brow mousse or anything like that, but just in their brow pencils. So if that's something that is alarming to you, steer clear of their brow pencils. Another ingredient call out that may be of concern to some people is an ingredient called BHT. It is also a preservative or they call it an antioxidant, basically to keep your makeup from spoiling. We've all gone in an old, drawer at our parents or grandparents house and found some makeup that's gone to seed and it just smells rancid. You know, this is preventing those kinds of things from happening prematurely. And BHT, while there were some health concerns about it in the past, mainly, no, entirely has to do with large amounts of it consumed orally. Our skin doesn't really absorb it. I would definitely stay away from it if you're concerned, uh, if you found it in like a lip product, but in this case, it is only in the Vanish stick that I used on my face and also their uh, one of their brow pencils, the Arch Brow Pencil. So if that ingredient is a concern to you, then definitely steer clear of those two products. Now, earlier I mentioned retinol. So it is actually retinol palmitate and and they always get these really scary scores on, like I said, EWG and cause DNA, just because retinol is meant to peel your skin. <laughs> it is meant to make your skin brighter and to make your cell turnover increase. And that is beautiful for anti-aging, beautiful for anti-acne, but in the wrong hands, if you don't know, a, you're not supposed to wear it in the sun, and B, you are not supposed to use it if you're pregnant or nursing. And so I feel like that's kind of common knowledge when it comes to retinols, but always be aware of that. The weird thing is the products that contain the retinol are just the number 28 priming serum and the number 28 lip treatment oil. We'll get to the lip treatment oil in a second because She's deep and wide, okay, <laughs> with all kinds of concerns, but I would definitely steer clear of those just because I don't think that it's a good idea to have retinol in a product that you wear during the day, either on your lips or on your face. It's going to make your face really photosensitive and probably make it burn more easily, make it age more quickly the whole opposite reason that you would ever use a retinol. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like, these are daytime products. You're supposed to use retinol at night. <laughs> don't use retinol in the sun. <laughs> just, just don't. Now, before I talk about the, the lip oil, I wanna talk about one more thing with this foundation. So, like I said, I went to Sephora and I was reading the ingredients and one of the ingredients that I came across, I just kind of thought was like one of the really long lab names and it was probably totally fine. But then I pulled it into like EWG and and cause DNA and I did a little bit more searching on it and it is called ethyl hexyl methoxy cinnamate and I thought to myself well that sounds like I should probably trust that chemist that everything's fine <laughs> you know <laughs> like it's a really long word I'm usually like they probably know more than I do 
When I searched it, it was actually really hard to find because it is more commonly known as octanoxate. If you are not an ingredients nerd, you might not know that pretty much any chemical sunscreen that you are using is probably going to contain octanoxate. There are some really, really strongly vilified chemical sunscreens out there, and then there are Questionable chemical sunscreens, we're not gonna get into the whole reef safe thing today, that is like a whole other video, but I encourage you if that's something that you are curious about to research it more. I personally only use mineral sunscreens just because chemical sunscreens tend to make my skin have this funny like texture to it. It's not a breakout, it's not like cystic acne or something, but it will give my skin, if I wear it a lot of days consecutively, it'll give my skin kind of like a texture that I don't totally love. It also is not the most complete sun protection that you can get. It is literally only for uh, UVB, I believe, so it will keep you from burning, but it will not protect you from UVA, which is UV aging rays. So it actually won't stop your skin from kind of discoloring, which is what I struggle with the most. It's not necessarily that I burn. I don't really burn that badly. I actually just get melasma and freckles and just spotting really, really badly. And so I stay away from that kind of stuff. I use something much stronger. I have a lot of really great mineral sunscreens that I love, but I just thought that that was interesting because it also has titanium dioxide in it. So that's another sunscreen ingredient, but this product doesn't make any claims about SPF. It doesn't have any SPF listed on the label, so it must be in pretty darn small amounts, which makes me interested to know why they would put it in there, other than just like having like a little bonus, <laughs> you know, a little bonus like SPF ingredient without actually claiming any SPF level on the label. So um, like I said, it must be very small because they can't even make the claim, but also sneaky sneaky, just a little bit weird. It's kind of interesting how a lot of this stuff you would think they'd be upfront about, and it's in there, you don't really know why, they don't mention it, and it's under such a long name as ethyl hexyl methoxycinamate, when what we're talking about is just a chemical sunscreen. I probably won't be using it every single day, which kind of goes without saying, I'm not a full coverage foundation every single day kind of person, but <laughs> this foundation is so pretty that for an event or something like that, these ingredients don't bother me so much that I will like never wear this again. This is so photogenic. It's so blurring and smoothing, but also skin texture. I would recommend it for your wedding. I would recommend it for any time that you're gonna be photographed or something like that. Make sure that you go in and get shade matched because there are a lot of shades. You wanna make sure that you get it right. But I don't think that any personally of these ingredients like throw up enough red flags that would say like, don't buy this foundation. Like it's good enough that I think that the beautiful performance is worth it. Now let's talk about this here lip oil. I will say when I was scoping out Hourglass even years ago, the lip oil is probably what I found the most appealing. There's just something about that super luxury packaging with that beautiful little metal tip on it. It just screams, I am a $49 lip oil and you're gonna feel different now. Like this is gonna be something that changes your life. You're that girl now who uses a $49 lip oil and the whole world can feel you vibrating luxury, you know? And then I read the ingredients and yes, it's an oil, but there are a lot of different kinds of oils out there. There are carrier oils, there are fatty alcohols, and then there are things like essential oils, and there's all kinds of stuff in between. There's your nut oils and your coconut oils and all that stuff. So this has a lot <laughs> of essential oils in it, one of them being clove oil, which apparently is like not great. <laughs> it has a very high rate of allergic reaction and sensitivity on the skin, which is saying something that EWG or CosDNA would call that out because they typically are pretty in favor of the whole essential oils thing. So not everything gets that really high scary rating. Some of these things, I mean, we've got sunflower oil, hazelnut oil, we've got green tea oil, we've got cherry pit oil, things like that that are like really beautiful. Absolutely like, you know, no complaints, get a one across the board from everybody. But then we've also got limonene, citronellol, linalool, citrus lemon peel oil, phototoxic oils that you should not be putting on your face and then going outside in, guys. It's just like, it's a lot. I'm sure there's not that much of any of these in there, but for a 
$49 lip oil. They don't specify online that you should only wear this at night. They are recommending that you use this whenever you gosh darn feel like it. And I think that some of these ingredients are kind of irresponsible. The final thing with the lip oil is that it is just chock full of fragrance. Some of those fragrances come from oils and things like that. Some of them are synthetic fragrances. It's just probably the least clean product in their line. And I would like completely steer clear of it if I were you. Um, I'm not going to be buying it anytime soon. And honestly, it's probably kind of a relief <laughs> for me to tell you to not buy a $49 lip oil today. The other thing that I would steer clear of is the number 28 primer serum, uh, just because like I said, it also contains uh, retinal palmitate, which you should not be wearing outdoors <laughs> during the day. It's just kind of asking for trouble. I don't care how good your SPF is, like why shoot yourself in the foot? But other than that, the products that I would highly recommend that get great marks across the board are uh, the Veil Mineral Powder, the Ambient Lighting Powders, but they do contain phenoxyethanol, a lot of them do. The Veil Translucent Setting Powder does not contain any phenoxyethanol, it is absolutely beautiful. Um, the Confession Ultra Slim High Intensity Refillable Lipstick, the only concern is that it has fragrance in it, but <laughs> most lip products do. They don't necessarily contain as much as that lip oil does. And some people it's not a concern at all, but outside of the possibility of it being like so strong that it gives you a headache or so strong that it hurts your skin in some way, most people would prefer to have a little bit of fragrance in a lip product just because it lives right under your nose. And sometimes, I don't know guys, I started recently using a completely unscented shampoo and conditioner there's a reason some things are scented, okay? I'm not going back anytime soon, but definitely for like what the public is used to, the everyday consumer is probably going to appreciate like a light vanilla scent over just the smell of the ingredients. That's just my personal take. I don't blame them for putting a little bit of fragrance in a lip product. Smell it see if it bothers you before you buy it. But I mean, I do personally, like I've been wearing the, the Kosas, the, the wet oil, it has a fragrance to it. A lot of these have fragrances to them. Like I said, the Arch Brow and the Mechanical Gel Eyeliner both have parabens in them. So I said eyebrows both times before. I meant uh, brows and eyeliner. The Vanish Seamless Foundation Stick that I have on my face right now, the main concerns would be phenoxyethanol, uh, the BHT, both of which are preservatives, they get like a four on EWG and then the sneaky little chemical sunscreen. So just be aware of that. The Hidden Corrective Concealer does contain talc as does the Veil Retouching Fluid, which is kind of like a, a lighter weight kind of touche claw kind of like uh, highlighting concealer, as well as the Vanish Seamless uh, Foundation Stick. The issue with talc and the reason that it gets kind of like high scores, which again is bad on things like EWG and, uh, and cause DNA is because of sourcing and potential contamination. So always keep those kinds of things in mind. There are definitely brands out there like Cover Effects, just for an example, that don't use talc at all if you wanna stay away from that kind of thing. Or you can like email the brand, dig deep on where they source their stuff from, how often they actually check the batches and things like that. Um, but that is the reason that typically talc is kind of vilified is for sourcing issues, um, not necessarily because it in and of itself is a bad ingredient. So I want to help you guys navigate these spreadsheets. They're going to be in Google Docs and there are two. So they are the same doc, but one has been what's called transposed. So essentially the, uh, the Y and the X axis get switched. So there's one where you'll be able to look from a, an ingredients standpoint and see what products contain certain ingredients and you'll be able to filter by the ingredients. And then the other one is going to be by product. So that if you are shopping for a specific product and you want to know if it contains certain things based on the EWG scores and things like that, you'll be able to filter on the product for the ingredients. You'll see when you get there. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below, but it should be pretty darn easy to navigate with the uh, small exception of the fact that it's, it's just exhaustive. There are a lot of products. So hopefully you guys find that helpful. It will always be there for your reference. So let's talk about the brand itself and their ethics and things like that. So first and foremost, Hourglass is cruelty free. They make a huge deal about it. They are planning to be completely vegan uh, by next year, which is fantastic. And they donate 1% of their profits to the Non-Human Rights Project, which is the only civil rights organization working to secure fundamental rights for animals. They have this really cute social media campaign with all these people like up against their animal. And it's just like one of their eyes and one of their like pet's eyes. It's 
It's adorable. Um, so I think that that's really, really cool. I know a lot of you guys out there are not just ingredients conscious, but also really conscious of the cruelty-free status of different brands. And they are like 100% leading the way in the whole cruelty-free thing, and that's fantastic. They also have a ton of gluten-free products and a ton of paraben-free products. Like I said, there are only two paraben products. From a packaging standpoint, from what I can tell, they use pretty much everything. They use like chromed plastic, they use soft touch plastic, they use metal in some cases. They do have refillable lipsticks though, which is pretty cool because that is like a really luxurious little tiny like lipstick container thing. I'll stick one on the screen. Um, and then you can buy refills for it so you don't end up throwing that huge package away. And then their primers and stuff like that come in glass. So that is not the worst thing in the world, but they also don't make any mention of any kind of sustainability practices or anything like that having to do with their packaging. Like they don't even talk about it. It's not a thing on their website. Again, this is not a brand that self identifies as clean. They have their ethical standards. They're really, really passionate about cruelty free. And that's where they're gonna leave the conversation. You know what I mean? Like they've left the chat. That's all the information on the brand itself. Let's move into my final thoughts. So, do I think that Hourglass is a clean brand? No, but from a how clean is standpoint, my arbitrary scale, they're pretty clean, <laughs> you know? They have some really, really great products that like, like I said, phenoxyethanol, I've probably said the word a hundred times in this video. It is an ingredient that is in tons of other clean beauty products. It is by no means a deal breaker for me personally. And so I think that we can consider their powders and things like that clean. I will say that their Vanish Foundation Stick has epic enough of performance and I don't plan on wearing it every single day that I'm willing to get past the, uh, the sneak chemical sunscreen that is in it that is probably in a very small amount. Go for the Veil Mineral Primer over the number 28 Primer Serum. It just has a lot cleaner of ingredients. And for all of the other products, definitely feel free to refer to the spreadsheet so that I'm not just repeating myself. But I think that the main concern here was like things that are everybody's like holy grail favorites, like the powder products, the blushes, and the foundations. So I hope that that helps you guys. Um, I personally, if I can just sort of insert my own kind of opinion here, I'm really, really excited to have kind of dug in deep and found this information out because it makes me excited to confidently try more products from Hourglass. I feel like they're doing a really, really good job, especially for a luxury beauty company, like a very prestige line, of making sure that there is integrity and thought put behind their ingredients. And I do feel like even though some people might disagree with the choices that they made, I feel like they made educated choices. This is not a careless set of choices when it comes to these ingredients. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys. If it was, like I said, leave me a like down below because A, it will let me know that you want more videos like this and B, it's going to help other people who would probably appreciate this information find this video. And if you have specific requests for brands, I know that some of you guys have been requesting we have milk makeup coming up. I'm going to do Patrick Ta. Um, some of you guys have been asking about Bare Minerals. And there were a few more, but if you have other specific like brand requests that you want to do a How Clean Is episode on, I can absolutely do that. Just leave it down in the comments below. If you're new here and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. We're talking about ingredients a lot. We're spilling the beauty and ingredients safe tea. Bye. <laughs> the button's down there. You know where it is. Turn on the notification bell so you know when I upload. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Ew! My lips are doing that gross thing. Patrick Ta did me dirty!